So I'm Mary Jane Borsma, and I've been asked to speak on behalf of the Van Dernum family. I guess I was the only one that got the gift of gab from my dad. <laughs> to everything there is a season, a time every matter under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what has been planted, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to keep, and a time to cast away. We are gathered here today in memory of my mother, Augusta Van Dierdunk. I am reminded today of her love of gardening. She was a member of the Elmer Garden Club for many years. Gardeners are special people. It takes patience, perseverance, and love for things to grow, a garden and beautiful flowers. She always knew all the names of all the different flowers and the plants in her garden. She was very proud of her garden, whether it was the vegetable garden that fed her family or the flower beds that she enjoyed. I think that was mom's reason why after they retired from farming, she did not want to leave the farm. With her passion of gardening, she has nurtured, influenced several of my siblings that have green thumbs and the love for gardening. I believe she is now at peace, sitting amongst the beautiful flowers in heaven with her granddaughter Natasha, and she'll be greatly missed. Mom also taught us to try different things. She supported us by taking us to swimming lessons, even though she didn't know how to swim, learned how to ride bicycles, downhill skiing, and paddling a canoe. She encouraged us to participate in different sports, even though most of the time she never had opportunities for that. Mom, being a mother of six and working on a tobacco farm, could not have been any easy task, especially with some of my siblings. We admire Mom's ability to cook for the big family, countless farm workers and helping hands, and she still contributed to the farm. She also had taught us on how important it was to recycle and to help our environment. There wasn't a scrap of vegetable that didn't go back to the farmland. Um, and I, how fortunate we are to be raised with uh, the Belgian cuisine. Her, her raisin bread, Belgian waffles, steak and french fries will always be remembered. While in Belgium, Mom was a seamstress, and with this experience, she sewed and repaired most of our clothes when we were growing up. And some of us siblings still carry on that passion of sewing. It was important for Mom to share her heritage and that the adventure to Canada with her children and grandchildren. Each of us have been to Belgium, and when we went, the visit always included a house where she grew up in Tilt and a visit to the Monica Peace in Brussels. Wanting to celebrate 50 years of her um, immigration to Canada, Mom, Janet, and all of her grandchildren took a train trip back to Pier 21 in Halifax to signify her traveling from Halifax here to the Toronto area with her parents. That is the point of entry for most Belgian immigrants. The trip was very memorable for mom and her grandchildren. With your encouragement, pride of heritage, mom, you will live on through all of your children and grandchildren. And you'll be dearly missed. Now I'd like to call on my sister, Nancy. Thank you, Mary Jane. Hello, everyone. Due to COVID restrictions, we were not able to see or visit Mom since September. In October, we started weekly Zoom calls to stay connected with, with her on every Sunday. Since Christmas, we could see Mom's health deteriorating. So I read this letter to Mom on our very last Zoom call past this past Sunday. My family has asked me to share this letter with you today. Dear Mom, I feel so bad that we have not been here for you. Because of COVID and the safety of Dad and the other residents, 
but you have not been able to come to visit or hold your hand. It's not right, and you don't deserve this. Mom, be proud that you and Dad have celebrated 68 years together and raised a beautiful family. Your legacy will continue for years to come. I want you to know that you are so loved. You have six wonderful children and raised a beautiful family. Your legacy will continue for years to come. Your grandchildren, sorry. I want you to know that you are so loved. You have six wonderful children and spouses that miss you all. Your grandchildren miss you as well. Truly loved. Mom, I want to say thank you for being my mom. We've had so many great memories. You have taught me that family is very important and your Belgian background was so important to you. Both are very important to me. Hard working was your motto. Paul and I definitely see more and more of your traits in me every day. I am so thankful for my sisters and brother. With them, I am stronger and a better person. I'm lucky that we have, are very close and stay connected, stronger together. Thank you for devoting your life to having all of us. I know you didn't say it or show it, but you were so proud of your children and grandchildren. Cody and Dee are engaged, and I know that you would be so happy for them. Ryan is almost a doctor, and yes, you'll have a doctor as a grandson. Ashley continues her caring personality and one is, is one of my truly caring, loving supporters through this difficult time. She will always have a caring heart, Mom. Nicole is enlightening and guiding the youth and young minds of tomorrow with great passion. And Alex is continuing his education in Vancouver to become a mechanical engineer. We all love you so much, Mom. Rest in peace. So yes, that was our last Zoom call with her mother. But I believe that it gave her the ability to say that her work here was done. She knows she was loved by us and that we will carry on her legacy. So rest in peace now. Your job is done here on Earth. Thank you, everyone. My name is Father John. I'm working and involved with the Elgin family of parishes, St. Thomas and Albert and West Warren. And uh, so to thank you for asking me to come and to say some prayers today for Augusta and, of course, always remembering the whole family as we gather our prayers together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, we believe that our dwelling on earth is but for a time and that our true homeland is in heaven. We gather in faith to pray for our sister Augusta, who has been called to live forever in a dwelling place prepared for all God's faithful. Let us pray. God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant Augusta, whom you have called to journey to you. And since she hoped and believed in you, grant that she may be led to our true homeland to delight in his everlasting joys. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are all away from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body 
and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of God, so that each may receive recompense for what we have done in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The one who conquers will inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We can stand with the gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house there were many there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come and will take you to myself. So that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We can be seated, please. Yeah. To thank um, Janet, first of all, for taking my phone call to things to organize and Joanne who sent me some words and of course uh, many of those words that were shared were mentioned already today in the talks by uh, Mary Jane and Nancy so thank you the gift of the farm I grew up in Park Hill not far from here on a dairy farm apple farm 
In my kindergarten class at Sacred Heart School in Park Hill, I, I was the only child there that was actually from Canadian parents. All the rest were either Belgian or Dutch. And uh, so I grew up around many of the Belgians and Dutch that came over just after the Second World War. And uh, so I had a many, a, a lot of friends. And I can remember going to visit a friend of mine, and I was very young, and they gave me a sandwich, and it actually had chocolate sprinkles on it. <laughs> I uh, took me by surprise who eats chocolate on their sandwiches. But, um, and then, of course, I think out of a, as a joke, they'd give me those little salt droplets of salt and things, you know, just to see what I would do. And um, yeah, they were very interesting. But, the, but again, it's just the, as it was mentioned, the work ethic that I witnessed as a child visiting the Dutch farms and the Belgian farms, mostly, I know down here a lot of tobacco, but where I'm up there's not much tobacco up my way, but a lot of them were into the pig farming. And so, um, but again, very, very busy. And if they weren't in the pig barn, they were picking cucumbers all summer long. And uh, so that was always, in my mind, a very interesting job, especially in the heat of the sun. But many beautiful families that I've come to know over the years. My brother bridged the gap between the Dutch and the Belgian, marrying a gal from Park Hill whose mom was Belgian and her dad was Dutch. <laughs> and so, uh, so Deb's been, a, of course, a very integral part of our family, too. But of course, we speak of families, we speak of home, and it's beautiful to hear how they go back to Belgium and they would visit their homes and things like this, and even to go to Halifax to find out where that connection was made with their, their new home country. But our Lord reminds us today that all of these places that we've been, all these places that we hold in our memories are beautiful. But we are preparing for that one last journey. One last journey to a home that will be our eternal home. And that's a home that all of us long for, at least we hope we long for. The gift of our faith, and I know that the preference would have been to have a mass set today, but then the restrictions is difficult. But that doesn't mean that we can't have Masses offered, of course, and Memorial Mass is offered for Augusta, and we remember her that way at the altars, for sure. But again, that understanding that, if I look back, you know, even if 68 years of marriage, and, and I'm 54 years old, and it just seems I can look back and see as if it was a yesterday that I was 24 years old or 14 years old. Time goes by so fast. And 68 years, that's beautiful, what a, what a tribute to the gift of marriage. But I'm sure that when you think about it, it just seems like yesterday. You can remember walking down the aisle with your, with your bride, George, and uh, offering your vows until death do you part. And although physically you've parted, but your hearts are obviously very much together, as I witnessed uh, before we closed the casket, you're outpouring of many, many tears. And what a beautiful gift to have that kind of love. So, but today, as much as we try to keep our homes beautiful, for people when they come to see our houses cozy, our houses peaceful, our houses welcoming, we can only imagine what it must be like to go and to, to be with our Lord. And to be welcomed into his, our new house in heaven, a place where we can't even imagine how beautiful it is, and a place, too, where there will be no more tears, no more pain, no more sorrow, but just the joy of the gift of eternity. I can't imagine what it would be like. Again, I, my parents are both on the farm still, and I'm able to go home and visit, although I'm careful, of course, this time with, this, with the pandemic around us. But I have talked to many families who had to go through what you've been through as far as uh, a loved one in a nursing home or a hospital, ICU, where they can't visit, and it's very, very difficult. So although the beautiful gift that God reminds us is that where there is suffering, he is very close. So again, um, um, Nancy, your letter, how beautiful to have had that chance to share that with your mom uh, before she died. And how much that they would hold on to those words. I had a buried a lady just the other day, and the family was telling me that because they couldn't visit the Valley View nursing home, they were told that the nurses would often hear their mother speaking to the pictures 
that were of the family around her, speaking to her grandchildren, speaking to her family. She knew that they couldn't respond, obviously. She wasn't, she was okay. But it was her way of talking, of being close to her family, because she couldn't see them. And so this pandemic has certainly left us with many voids. However, there's no void that can't be filled with love. And I can't help but sense that love in the room today. So, Augusta, we're here to pray for you. We pray that you have fallen into the hands of God and that we'll offer Mass for you. The beautiful, powerful prayer there is to be set, of course, in the gift of heaven for eternity. That's our prayer for Augusta today. Jesus, our Savior, has gone before us and prepared a place for us in our Father's house. We now place our trust in Him. Christ Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Welcome our sister Augusta to the place you prepared for her. In the Father's house, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ Jesus, you are the glory of believers and the life of the just. Admit Augusta into the company of those who have gone before her and are numbered among your saints in glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ Jesus, you draw all things to yourself. Forgive the sins of our sister and grant that she may live in your peace forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ Jesus, you nourished our sister with your body and blood during her pilgrimage on earth. May she delight in the rich fare you provide at the banquet table in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ Jesus, you are kind and compassionate. Free those who mourn from their distress and lift the burden of their sorrow. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And gathering all of our prayers together, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen into your hands O lord we humbly entrust our sister augusta in this life you embraced her with your tender love deliver her now from every evil and bid her enter eternal rest the old order has passed away welcome her into then to paradise where there will be no sorrow, no weeping, nor pain, but the fullness of peace and joy with your Son and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again. When the love of Christ which conquers all things destroys even death itself. In baptism, Augusta shared in the death and resurrection of Christ. May she be welcomed into the glory of eternal life. I know that my Redeemer lives, and on the last day I shall rise again. In my body I shall look on God my Savior. I myself shall see him. My own eyes will gaze on him. This is the hope I cherish in my heart. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commit, commend our sister, Augusta, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant, and help us who remain to cover one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our sister forever. Blessed are those who have died in the Lord. Let them rest, let them rest from their labors, for their good deeds go with them. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. And may her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.